Yo, what's good people? It's your boy Nile, J E W C A G. We are back with another video today. Now, people, you guys have been messaging me and commenting down below on my Italian video saying, bro, please react to the geography of Italy. And you know what? This is what this video is going to be about. You're going to be reacting to, uh, it's called geography now, and it's called Italy. Like, this is geography. And a lot of you guys are saying, bro, loads of people have done this reaction, you know. And we think you should do it. So this is what I'm going to be doing. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this video. And for me, it's going to be good because it's going to give me a bit more knowledge about Italy. Like I am Italian, but like when it comes to geography of different countries and stuff, I don't even know geography about England. So about anywhere else, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be new to me. So hopefully you guys do enjoy this. And if you do enjoy it, please make sure you smash the like button and subscribe and turn on post notifications. We are trying to reach 100,000 subscribers and we cannot do, we do it without the help of you guys. So make sure you all do that. And make sure you all head, head over and follow my Instagram and I'll J-A-W-C as well. Be like people, oh, hey, come. Let's go straight into it. Come, man. Okay, people, so here it is. This video is like 13 minutes long. So this could be potentially a long video, but it's going to be very knowledgeable for me as well to know a bit more of the geography. So hopefully you guys do enjoy it. But yeah, let's go. Well, I'm personally excited because today we cover the country where one quarter of my heritage comes from, Italia. There is no such thing as a single- Oh, this guy's quarter Italian as well. Let me. Let's go. Wait. Single type of Italian. People from Sicilia would almost need a translator to understand people in Ven- Wait, Sicilia? Is that what it's called? I've never heard anyone call it Sicily. Is it- I thought it's called Sicily. Uh, am I wrong? But is it pronounced Sicily or Sicily? But I never- Is it- or is it a different place? Wait, hold on. No, that's Sicily, right? Or is it, what, that's Sicily, what? Translator to understand people in Veneto. Napoli looks incredibly different from Milano. And people from South Tyrol are like, uh, Valm sind wir hier? But for what it's worth, oh. Italy has definitely made its mark. And today, we jump in. Va bene? Cominciamo! <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs, okay. derived from my last name, Barbato, which translates to Beard Man. Right. I'm serious, Let okay, me laugh all this. you want, but that just means I might be related to Scipio Africanus Barbatus, <laughs> the guy who defeated Hannibal in, I think, the Second Punic War. So ha! I got victory in my blood! Nah, I'm probably related to some ancient guy that sold barley or something. Barley <laughs> that was eaten by Scipio Africanus Barbatus who defeated Hannibal! <laughs> so yes, I still got it! I basically defeated Hannibal! But where was Hannibal defeated? Let's find out in... Political in Italy, thing. it's all about tutte le strada portano a Roma. First of all, Italy is that boot-shaped country kicking two deflated soccer balls located in Europe at the heart of the Mediterranean Sea, bordered okay. by France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia in the north, and two micro I didn't know that. engulfed within Italy, the Vatican City, and I've San been Marino, there. which is I've like the easiest Sandrine country to sneak Nova. into. Like seriously, there's a Japanese restaurant and a sports store next to the entrance with no guards. With two, <laughs> this makes Italy the country with the most other countries enclaved inside of it. South Africa was so close with Swaziland, but then Mozambique had had to exist. Oh, and there was that time Reggio tried to secede from Italy back in the 70s, which almost made it three, but that's a whole other story. Just look it up. The country is divided into 20 regions with the capital Rome. Five of the regions have special autonomous status. Sardinia, okay. Sicily, Trentino Alto, or oh, Sud Tirol, yeah. otherwise known as South Tyrol, Yaosta Valley, and Friuli oh, Venezia Giulia. The country's largest cities are, of course, the capital of Rome, then Milano, and Napoli, with the busiest airports oh, being Rome, Naples, Leonardo da Vinci, Fiumicino, oh, Milan Malpensa, gosh. and Bergamo Caravaggio International Airports. In addition to the two largest islands, Sicilia and Sardinia. The country owns over 350 islands off its coast. Finally, there's that land dispute with France over the summit of Mont Blanc and a small little two and a half kilometer long enclave in Switzerland called Campione d'Italia, which is kind of like a special spot exempt from the EU valley. Okay, okay, can I just say something, bro? This guy is going so fast. And my brain is literally just trying to process everything what he's talking about right now. Like, I am so confused. Like, so far, and there's a mountain that's all France and Italy are arguing over about who owns it, and then there's this special spot that's like in the, the European, and yeah, but this is this is a lot of information for me to take on board. But yeah, let's go on. Value added tax zone, which makes sense because it has Italy's largest casino. Phew, Italy, you got some complication oh, fanatics casino. going on. The funny thing is, modern Italy once even tried to take a stab at colonialism in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, with areas stretching from the Balkans, Northern Africa, and the Horn of Africa, including a short kind of occupation of Ethiopia, but oh, wait, didn't really? last that long because the Ethiopians fought back relentlessly. And to this day, it's back to the boot with two deflated soccer balls. Guys, I'll convert metric for you, but I call it soccer, okay? The Canadians, South Africans, Australians, Kiwis, Japanese, and parts of Ireland and the Philippines and 
Papua New Guinea all agree with me, okay? It's, it's not just football. Americans that call it soccer. What's it's... calcio? Okay, good luck with that. Now, this is the part where I typically go down the list of notable sites found in Italy. However, the problem is there are literally too many. I'm not even joking. Italy has more heritage sites than any other country in the world at over 50. We all know about the big guys, so I'm not going to mention most of them. Instead, through my extensive research, here are some obscure, lesser known, yet equally fascinating spots worthy of noting. The dining table of Bilalante, the Bomarzo Horror Garden, Ai Piapi, a theme park made of rides that require your own kinetic energy to operate, the necropolis of Antacia, La Scarzuola Monastery, the free wine fountain of Camino di San Tommaso. Let that just sink in. Free wine. The okay, where is this free wine, people? Because I need to go to Italy and go to this free wine fountain, bro. What? Uh, all of these, all of those things he just said, bro. I have no idea. I've never heard of them ever. That's my first time ever seeing them. And bro, free wine, free wine. I will go there with like so many buckets and just keep filling up my bucket with wine, bro. Like, oh my gosh. The relics of Jesus' apostle St. Thomas, the geothermal waterfalls of wow, Tuscany, the sunken city of Baia, the cliffside town of Santa Gata de Gotti. Now let's blast off like a volcano, which Italy has, into the next segment, shall we? Yeah, I'm so left in the womb. Now, we all know that Italy before. is insanely beautiful in so many areas. Everybody wants to see it. I mean, even Mr. and Mrs. Information went there on their honeymoon. You're welcome. First of all, Italy's beauty comes at a cost. The country lies just above the convergence of the Eurasian and African plates in the Mediterranean. So what does that also mean? on the Apennine or Apennini thrust fault line that smashes into Western Europe, and that's how the Alps were formed. Italy's yeah. mountains are volcanic fault formed. It has created some amazing natural formations like the Dolomiti rocks, the steep sides of Lake Garda, the largest lake Garda, in Italy, I'm the Umbria sure. valleys, the undulating hills of Tuscany. This also means that Italy is kind of split in half east and west with a major lush basin locked in I would have thought that, that an abundance of fresh snow cap water melt creating rivers like the longest one the Po River located in the aptly named Po Valley. This yeah, valley extends about 650 kilometers 400 miles all the way from yeah. the French border to the Adriatic Sea Bro, which ends what? in a little city you may have heard of called Venezia. Yeah I know I could die but oh man the pizza here is really <laughs> Speaking of which, about a quarter of the land is arable, allowing them to grow lots of food. I'm sure you are fully aware of the typical Italian dishes. However, yes, each region yes, kind of yes, specializes yes. in a certain cuisine. In the north, you have foods like polenta, gnocchi, white truffles, gnocchi. Liguria has great pesto. And in South Tyrol, you have Germanic-inspired dishes I've like noodle dumplings and strudel. In the center, you have things like lasagna, boar, artichokes, lamb, steak, gelato, pasta, gelato. which comes with over 600 yeah. variations. Indisputably, the best wine is in Toscana. The south is the pizza kingdom, and Napoli is like the capital. Bro. Sardinia is known oh, for those cool these cheese fruit dumpling things. Oh. Italy enjoys a mild Mediterranean climate, only snowing in the north and high altitude areas. Now, despite deforestation I mean, and pollution being an issue... I'm pretty sure it snows all over. When it says snows, because, wait, Pes Pescara, that's south. Right, that's south, and it snows there. I know that because I've been knowing it snows. Shoe and sure. Venice flooding almost every year now. Italy yeah, is actually Venice the most floods. fauna biodiverse country in Europe, with over 57,000 species recorded. That's about a third of all European fauna. About 4,800 are endemic, like the Sardinian red deer, the Italian cave salamander, the alpine oh, wow. marmot, Marsican brown bear, the crested porcupine, and the national animal, the Italian wolf. I've Otherwise, as the eighth largest nominal GDP in the world and the eighth largest exporter, Italy's economy is heavily driven off of industry and production, specifically in luxury items. Major world-renowned companies like Fiat, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Ferrari. Maserati, Ducati, Pirelli, Armani, and Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, and Prada oh, are key players in keeping Italy In Italian, many ways, bro. there's kind of like a sense of class that's almost expected with being Italian. No matter how <laughs> intense things may get, you don't just waltz in here with your shoes unpolished. Which brings us to... Fashion. Uh, now, being <laughs> Italian, we've all heard the stereotypes. Loud, passionate, hand gesturing, bad driving, temperate, sensitive, clean freaks that never follow the rules. And as offensive as that may sound... Yeah, that is very true, bro. Italians doing that hand gestures, it's like... Managia Marizia, like, bro. They, they do all this, like, bro, there's so much and just... You know what I mean? Like, my granddad when I was little used to go, cara, cara, botte, botte, botte. Like, bro, there's so many different... Hand gestures, you know what I mean? But that is, that is so, but you know what? It's just how Italians are, bro. They speak with their hands as well. It's so funny. I've missed Italy for like a year because I'm obviously COVID, but bro, honestly, I miss being, I miss going to Italy. It's kind of based off of truth, but with good reasoning. We'll explain in a bit, but first, Italy has about 61 million people in their country, and they are the third most populous country in the EU after the whole Brexit thing, and the sixth in all of Europe. Getting the exact ethnic makeup in Italy is a little difficult because Italy is a say, lot more diverse than you would think. Is. About 92% of the country identifies as ethnically Italian, Italian, although keep in mind, that's kind of a broad term considering how many different types and shades of Italian there are, but nonetheless, Italian. Whereas about 2% are Romanian, 1% North African, and the rest of the country 
is made up of a slew of global people groups, everything from Albanian, Eritrean, Chinese, and yeah, Ukrainian. Bro, they also so use the Euro, the Type C there. plug outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, when it comes to Italy, it basically yeah. comes down to two things: north and south. Southerners like to jokingly call northerners polentoni, based off of the polenta that they eat, and likewise, <laughs> northerners like to call southerners terroni, which I actually don't even know where that's based off of. My research kind of ended there. If you Tell know, me? type it in the comments. Basically, the north is like where all the financial districts and stereotypical uppity preppy people live, whereas the south is kind of like where the rustic tough people live. Plus, you know, the south is kind of like mafia territory. Oh, come on. Everybody already knows yeah, it. Like the Costa Nostra that. in Sicilia, <laughs> Drangheta in Calabria, oh, Comora in Campania, Camorra. and the Sacra Corona Unita in Puglia. Don't worry, though. If you visit oh, okay. as a tourist, you should be fine. It's not much of a big deal anymore. I mean, unless you start a mob war by yourself, nothing will pretty much happen. <laughs> so, no starting mob wars, okay? <laughs> Got it? Aww. There are so many different dialects and sub- Wait, okay. Do any of you guys that are watching now, do any of you guys have, like, any family that is, like, part of the Mafia, like, the Mafioso, like, but I'm intrigued, like, I would love to meet the Mafia, like, I'd actually love to meet the Mafia, I'm just intrigued to see if any of you guys have Mafia family or Mafia-related family, like, I'm intrigued to see if you, any of you that like, have Mafia family or Mafia-related family, like, bro, that would be pretty sick, honestly, oh. Groups like South Tyrol mostly speaks German, kind of, Aosta Valley <laughs> speaks French, sort of, no, but seriously, the standard Italian language spoken in Tantanay oh, is based off of the Florentine so version of Tuscan Italian, which is kind of like an intermediate like between Italians. the Gallo-Romance dialects of the North and the Italo-Dalmatian dialects of the South. This all happened because prior to Italian unification, the country was split between multiple kingdoms and states, each with their own semi-Latin based language, which made communication a little bit of a challenge. For example, in standard Italian, you might say, di dove sei? But in Sicilian, di unisi? In standard, ciao, come stai? Tutto bene? But in Venetian, u come vale? Tutto bene? See, I, yeah, see, like, for me, like, like, even though, like, I don't speak fluent Italian, like, what I would say is ciao, come stai? Tutto bene? Like, that's the, that's like the standard Italian I know. Like, I've heard the Dove Sai before, I've never heard of the Dione, Dionisi or Come Vale Tutto Ben. Like, I've heard people say, but like for me, like the only one that I'd probably understand would be that one. Like, there are so many different variations of Italian, which is absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's insane. Ben, in standard, and that's why it's so Chetta, hard to learn. In Lombard, Peru? This is one of the reasons why Italians attribute the creation of the famous Italian hand gestures. People would travel barely 50 kilometers and find themselves in a hard to understand <laughs> dialect region. So essentially, they had to kind of get their point across fast. There's a saying that Italians uh -huh. have l'arte di arrangiarsi, or the art of arranging, which translates to something like the art of hands succeed. There's no specific code, but some generally accepted gestures include things like mi dispiace, sei pazzo, bere vino, bellissimo, delicioso, stai attento, ma cosa dici? See, you say buona, like you go buona, bu like buona, like, I guess, perfecto. Vecto and vai la corona. Speaking of societal background, we don't have enough time to explain the entire history of Italy, but in the quickest way I can put it, Etruscans, Romans, Christianity, ridiculous amount of separate kingdoms and feudal oh, states, barbarian invasions, like Byzantines, so medieval insane. kingdoms, Renaissance, wow. Napoleonic invasions, Sardinia, Piedmont unifies Italy after three independence wars, or four depending on who you ask, mass emigration to other countries begins, World War One, fascism, World War Two, resistance movement, after war, economic boom, 2008 crisis, oh, which brings us here today. What? Basically, the epicenter of ancient Rome was here, hence the capital being the named Empire. Rome. Speaking of which, even though the Italian monarchy ended long ago, there are still two descendants that still exist today I'm acting as heir apparent. The Catholic so Church has played a major role in Italy even to this day. Almost every single town has at least one church. About 88% of the country identifies as Catholic, however only a third say they are active practitioners on a weekly basis. And one of the reasons why Italy has made such a universal mark is partially because between the late 1800s and early 1900s, Italy experienced a mass emigration in which over the years around 25 million left. This is considered the largest mass migration of contemporary time. I was about to say, a lot of people do, like, a lot, because there's a lot of people that leave from Italy purely because of the fact that the jobs, the jo like, there's hardly no jobs, the jobs don't pay well, so a lot of people do migrate purely because of the financial reasons, like, it is hard in Italy, you know, to find jobs and stuff, so I guess that's why a lot of people migrate, but... Mm, Suddenly you have new communities of Italians all over the world in places like Brazil, <laughs> Argentina, the US, UK, and France. Oh wow, this video is running long and I didn't even get to talk about the deadly Calcio Florentino Game of Florence or, Wait, or the what? Santa Maria delle Grazie Snake Festival, Opera Pupi in Sicilia. So many cool things, but Bro, we gotta move on. What? Some notable people either from Italy or of Italian descent might include people like Cicero, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Michael, Dante yeah, Alighieri, yeah. Niccolo Machiavelli, Donatello, Caravaggio, Galileo Galilei, Christopher Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, Marco Polo, 
Nicolo Paganini, Giuseppe Roll. Garibaldi, Luigi Pirandello, Federico Fellini, Luciano Pavorati, Andrea Pavor Pocelli, Pavor Umberto Andrea Echo, Pocelli Sofia Lawrence, voice. Valentino Whoa. Rossi, Roberto Baggio, Monica Bellucci, Silvio Berlusconi, Enzo Ferrari, Donatello Versace, Giorgio Armani, mainstream American artists of Italian descent might include so many stars like Frank Sinatra, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Sylvester Stallone, Leonardo DiCaprio, Steve Buscemi, Quentin Tarantino, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, even Nicolas Cage has some Italian in him. Wait, Again, what? Italian what? people have such a strong that. and solid history and culture, but what does the rest of the world think of them? And what do they think about their neighbors? Well, that brings us to... Friend zone. Italy is a really great guy once you get to know him, but that's just the thing. You gotta warm up to them, al dente style. First of all, <laughs> France is like their best frenemy. They smile at each other, but secretly well, they they're always other. trying to compete with oh. who has the highest class and elegance. They also hate the fact that France has Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Nonetheless, with historical bumps like World War II, they still cooperate well today. Argentina is like their adoptive daughter that they sent to Spanish boarding school, but they still fiercely refuse to make friends with their neighbors. As mentioned in the Argentina video, the majority and largest of people that's... in Argentina okay. have Italian heritage and they love doing business with Italy. Malta and San Marino are kind of seen as like their little sons that they love helping out, even though San Marino is like way older than the modern unified state of Italy, <laughs> but that's besides the point. They think it's cute how Malta speaks their own language that kind of incorporates Italian words, and San Marino is like their good luck charm, whom more or less has always been peaceful and drama free since the fourth century. Of course, the Vatican is like a unique player that they pay their respects to, but will not give the opportunity to raise another empire, and hence they keep them confined to the Basilica grounds. In okay. terms of their best friends though, literally every Italian I talk to has said the exact same two countries, Greece and Spain. As mentioned in the Greece episode, they live I by the so Unfazza Unorazza rule. One face, one race. These three countries make the trinity of the Mediterranean. You know it's going to be a good time Greece when you put a Spaniard and a Greek and, and Italian in the same room. Okay. Nothing can stop them. They own the seas, they trade, they share stories, they drink together, they marry the crap out of each other. In conclusion, <laughs> for centuries, Italy has been a beacon of art, literature, fashion, architecture, history, religion, cuisine, traditions, and landmarks to the rest of the world. And personally, I'm proud to be a part of it. But most importantly, I'm proud that my barley selling bearded ancestors basically killed Hannibal and saved the universe and I get to take like at least 40% of their credit mm. So basically I saved the universe totally true not made up 100% back. <laughs> Stay tuned The Ivory Bro, Coast this, this, is coming this, up this next. guy is cool. People that was very interesting indeed the geography of Italy now a lot of you guys told me to react to that and like for me like there was so well literally yeah, there was so much stuff in there that I didn't know and like there's still some stuff now that like he's like I'm processing like bro because I did not know like so much of that like it's so fascinating but like for me to try and learn something just from that video is hard as well because there was so much that was going on and like it was just crazy like because Italy has got so much history and I don't know like by the sound like by the sounds of it like bro Italy had like for example they've got so many different ways of speaking Italian inside Italy itself and there's so many different parts and like different pronunciations that's why for me well I've, I've tried learning Italian like learning Italian is so hard purely, purely because of the fact that there's the feminine and masculine terms like you've got to learn both depending on who you talk to like Bella like Bella for the like, it's beautiful for a girl and Bella is beautiful for a boy like even just stuff like that like stuff ending with A is like feminine and O's masculine and stuff like that, and that's why a lot of females' names in Italy end in an A, like Francesca, whereas a boy it would be Francesco, and it's just simple, simple stuff like that, bro. But yeah, I, I'm proud to be Italian, honestly. Like this is interesting, and I feel like I should probably learn more, but yeah, I just don't. <laughs> I don't know why. Don't ask me why, but I just don't. But people, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video because I did, and if you did enjoy it, please make sure you smash the like button. And subscribe and turn on post notifications as well. But people, it has been your boy, now D-E-W-C-A-G's. Peace out, guys. Peace.